we have heard HB1C testing which is frequently prescribed nowadays by physicians. So what is HbA1c? HbA1c is also called glycated hemoglobin or glycosylated hemoglobin. This test as per ADA American Diabetic Association guideline is used both for diagnosis of diabetes mellitus as well as to monitor the progress of disease and to understand the efficacy of your ongoing diabetic treatment. What is HB1C? We all have RBCs, red blood corpuscles in our blood and we know that hemoglobin is there inside the RBC. Now, as a common physiological event, all human beings, we have blood sugar in our blood. And with time, this hemoglobin inside the RBC is glycated. That means blood glucose is added to this Hb. That is, that's why it is called glycated HbA1c or glycated hemoglobin. If we have persistent high blood glucose in our blood, with time, this Hb or hemoglobin inside the RBC is glycated more and more with the presence of increased amount of blood sugar and with the help of advanced technologies we estimate the hb1c in percentage what is the amount in percentage we estimate by different analyzers there are different technologies like hplc immunotarbidometry etc by which we can measure hba1c however hplc like Iron exchange high performance liquid chromatography is a standard and very good methodology for HbA1c estimation. It is called if you have less than 5.7% of HbA1c, it is non-diabetic that means you do not have diabetes mellitus. If it is in between 5.7 to 6.4, you are pre-diabetic that means latent diabetic that means you are not diabetic at present but you may develop diabetes mellitus in future. It is also seen in patients or in subjects who are having family history of diabetes mellitus. Now if the HbA1c percentage is 6.5 or more then it is called as or it is indicative of diabetes mellitus. Your physician is the best to understand or interpret the report. So usually it is advised that in a known diabetic patient at three months interval, you should do a HbA1c testing. What is the advantage of HbA1c over and above fasting and postprandial blood glucose? Because we all know that frequently fasting and PP blood glucose is also advised and we do. But the advantage of HB1C is that fasting and PP blood sugar, they usually gives you an estimate or the understanding of your recent or on that day, what was your uh, the status of diabetes mellitus. And you need to have a 8 to 10 hours fasting for fasting blood glucose. But in HbA1C, as the RBC lifespan is around 120 days that means the hb1c gives you an estimate of average three months blood glucose what was there and that is fantastic and amazing because you will be able to understand an entire picture of your last three months blood glucose control so it is advised that every three months interval the diabetic patient should go for a hb1c testing now there are some limitations of this test uh, as advantage is there you do not need to do fasting but there are some uh, limitations like hb1c cannot give you an understanding of if you are going through hypoglycemic phase that means hypoglycemia is frequently seen in diabetes patients who are having insulin high dose insulin otherwise this hb1c test is very useful and it gives you an understanding whether you are having diabetes mellitus or not at the same time, if you monitor your HB1C level at three monthly interval, then you can also understand what, whether your HB1C is again increasing or it is under control with your medication. We always try to keep HB1C below 7% in diabetes mellitus patient because then it's a good control. If it is more than 8%, then you need to review your therapy and your doctor may change your treatment. I think you have understood 
the basics of the HB1C and whenever under your medical supervision and with the advice of physician, you should do this test with the laboratory. Thank you.